and gentlemen, and again, first of all, my sincere thanks on behalf of the committee to everyone for your patience, as I was clearly willing to some way due to the extended site visits. As we've seen from the start of today's meeting, we have a large number of applications to deal with this today. So, as I provide them to the committee, I'll advise everyone else present, this may be an extremely long meeting, so we thank you for your patience, first of all. If you wish to address the committee on any of the applications before us today, your name needs to be on what is known as the important list. My colleague, Sir Leo Chamber, Vicky, has been taking names for the last half an hour or so. If your name isn't yet on that list, or you do think you wish to speak, please raise your hand now and we'll take your name. The reason being for this is very simple. We do not accept questions from the floor of the Chamber. We only take questions from members of the committee itself and only from those who have been invited forward to address the committee. Equally, those called forward to address the committee from the list, you will now have up to three minutes to address the committee on planning matters. I would advise you to keep your comments confined to planning issues for the simple reason those are what the committee can actually take into account when considering each application before it. We will flag up and indicate to you when you're close to the three minute limit. The reason alone will be advised strictly today is quite simple because there are a lot of people present. If anyone has any questions at this point, please raise your hand and I'll try and address them. Other than which, I'll go through a few more procedural issues. First of all, fire alarm. There's no drill scheduled today, therefore, the alarm does sound. We've taken an approximate note of everyone present. And you'll be safely escorted from the chamber from the green room in its desk of ways to your safety department. The recording and filming of proceedings is committed, is permitted, but only as far as it relates to members of the committee and officers present, so not to other members of the public. So just to make that very clear to everyone present. In terms of those proceedings, can I clear for all my to definition of interests? Uh, I can fly. Uh, the site 
sentence is to a very small, very restricted overpass. Here you've got Tom's Lane, and also you'll notice that around this junction you've got a cluster of larger buildings. Next slide, please. These include the former Naughty Ash Pub, Tom's the Care Home, the Liverpool Integrated Youth and Play Service, and also at the other end of Tom's Lane with this junction of Brookside Avenue, there are a number of large two and a half square so three story dwellings. Next slide, please. You will have seen from the scientists of today that the existing site is essentially uh, Brownfield previously developed land and is comprised of yards, buildings, garages, and an existing bungalow fronting onto Tom's Lane. That's the rear of Iron Farm, which is a listed building, although it's worthy of note that the front of the site elevation of the listed elevations. It's also located in a new main, as you there, the topography of the site. Um, it, the levels drop as you uh, traverse down Tom's Lane. One of the key issues on the site is the access on the express hot road. As you can see, that, that is a, it's barely bigger than a, 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 a large van. Um, you certainly can't get refuse wagons down there or fire appliances, um, which we feel puts the, the cottages that are access to the site at greater risk than is necessary. Next slide, We looked, uh, the, the site is a conservation area, we're very aware of that. Uh, we, as part of the design process, we looked through the, the, the map history of the site. And um, you'll notice that there are a row of, this is from 1880, there are a row of cottages where we propose Block D, there are a row of terraces from St. Thomas Lane, which is where we propose Block A. The grain of the response changes at this point, and you can also see that there are informal courtyards, that's the chapel we have to the site. There's also an access from Thomas Lane. Next slide, please. This is the site plan. Um, we adopted a number of drivers to produce the design. Obviously, we wanted to develop a brownfield and a blighted site with well designed and high quality blinds to design, design to suit workers and benefit the local community. A priority was to remove all site access with a pedestrian only space. This is the formal access which we pedestrianised. This will improve access for occupants of the adjacent properties who are located down here. Um, and also provides a much safer uh, route in and out of the site. <laughs> One of the key aspects for us was that dwellings were to have private hand door steps and as many dwellings as possible to have a dedicated front door. So whilst they are flats, these are houses and these are flats, um, I think all but two have got a dedicated front door and all but four have got some form of hand door steps. We feel that this is a, a carefully considered residential development designed, as I say, to see key workers. It includes 28 number bespoke women <coughs> and two bed dwellings in a combination of single storey, two storey, and duplex, arranged four blocks across the site to reflect the previous agricultural informal courtyard. We put in a new vehicle at pedestrian access on Tom's Lane and converted the, the former site access on his Prescott Road to pedestrian and we can introduce a little bit of public around the same time. Thank you. Councillor Murphy. Um, uh, thank you very much for arranging the site visit this morning. I think we all have the advantage of it. Um, if I can ask the applicant, um, when I looked at your design drivers, um, clearly you've met the objectives of a um, good excess plan. Uh, you've met the objectives of, of providing um, front doors, which is, is not particularly a phenomenal concept in housing, um, but it doesn't mention uh, compatibility with the whole historic nature of the conservation area. It doesn't mention the conservation area at all as a design driver. If I can play devil's advocate, because I believe that's the best way to tease issues out. If I was looking at a, a totally brownfield site, no doubt that design I would find the wall comes very attractive and I'll probably suggest you such if I want to look at it in a better sense. But if I look down the cottages and the frontages of the cottages on Naughty Ash, it is totally different. If I looked as we did this morning along Thomas Lane, it's totally
totally different to a modernist style composed for historic ceremonies and cottages. So, for a conservation area, why didn't you include design derived compatibility? And if I can make a question, um, I worked with a very good architect who looked at Devon Chapel in my own ward, and he produced a renovation of the church hall that kept the features and style and even building materials of all the surrounding buildings. And you wouldn't have known it wasn't historically part of the, the footprint. Why have you done something that's so contrasting and modernist in a conservation area? And is why wasn't that a design driver? You were very firmly of the belief you should have been there. And what what was historically, what was valued to the heritage was a lot of people. And not always acceptable. Not and often different from what Christy did. It. We've taken the 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 grain and the mass and the scale and introduced the involved courtyard, which obviously they can't isn't that part of the principles are and based around what was there. There is no it's not like that. There's no strong anatomy. You've got a chapel, you've got an ivy farm, you've got a series of terrace houses, a terrace uh, shops with dwellings over to the front, and you've got I think it's twelve small workers' cottages. Um, to, to be able to use those, it's possible to do, but is it the right thing to do? Um, we have to do something that, that isn't of the place and of the time. With the materiality that we bring, um, I don't know if but um, we will, the landscaping will also uh, work with the historical context, but certainly we wouldn't want to be a repeating of what's there. What would you repeat for a very, very different time? Are there any other questions? Thank you very much for the presentation. Thank you. Can I invite Councillor Harry Doyle to come forward to address the committee, please? Thank you, Chair. I'll keep me uh, in pretty brief because I think it's uh, as the councillors, all three of us, we've made our objections quite clear, as has um, and thanks to the committee as well for agreeing to take us today. Uh, I know Stephen Swift, the MP, wants to pass on that thanks. Um, I'll keep it very brief. I just think, um, again, going from my site this morning, I hope you see the character and the nature of the area um, that you visit our conservation area. And, you know, we've got, I don't know what I'm saying, there's three uh, local residents who will um, point out some of their objections in a moment. However, I would like to pick up on the fact that um, the architect um, during the presentation didn't actually show us any pictures of the cottages uh, in Little Bongs. Um, those cottages, which are thankfully you've had the site of this morning, um, are again part of the, used to be the homes of the Men apparently, and you know, they are uh, part of our local uh, history and again part of our conservation area. Uh, I'll just pick up on the access. Uh, point. Now, speaking with local residents at Little Bones, they actually like the access point on East Prescott Road um, for the reason that it's set back and away from the main access so that they have their privacy. The new plans would indicate that the main vehicle access will be on from Thomas Lane, will be access for the new development and onto Little Bones, which will completely destroy any privacy the residents currently have in Little Bonds. I would also mention also um, at highways issues in terms of the school on the roads we've currently got um, traffic issues problems in the morning um, but just rarely uh, strongly object and was mentioned actually by Councillor Radford in terms of the design of this development it is completely not fit into our area and completely not fit into our conservation area and I believe, and as uh, speaking with local residents, we're pragmatic, absolutely pragmatic, and we see the need for development on site. However, it's the right development, and free apartment blocks as well as to free properties as well, just is, and, and the design that it currently has is absolutely not the right development for this site. We ask you to come back, uh, we actually ask the committee to reject this, and let's look going forward with the residents' full consultation for what is best for our area. Thank you. Are there any questions? 
Can I invite Leslie Bauer to come forward to address the committee, please? Simply asking 
that the Batten Traffic Surveys were updated and that a new proposal is requested to take account of these issues raised and hopefully residents and the City Council and this committee can be a really good example of partnership working. Thank you. Are there any questions? Thank you for your comments. Um, can I now invite our planning officer to address the committee, please? Thank you, Chairman. Um, my name is John Hayes. I'm the Drum Control Team Leader for Planning Matters in the North of Liverpool. Um, Chair, just uh, a quick reminder um, and some housekeeping rules. Um, this item has briefly been before you. You referred it in order to undertake a slight visit, and that's taken place this morning. Um, at that first meeting, there was an additional comment provided by Stephen Twig MP, and they were captured in the minutes of that earlier meeting. Um, in terms of some housekeeping matters, Chair, the proposal uh, that is on um, page 10 of your agenda papers uh, in the title box is clearly being superseded by some amendments um, so that it is now uh, for the erection of three two story dwelling houses and um, two stroke three blocks of flats. It's effectively a linked block. Um, so that's why it's described as a two blocks in the report, uh, giving a total of 28 units again. Uh, which is being reflected in the presentation by the applicant. Um, and then just lastly, Chair, there are some very uh, minor amendments needed uh, to conditions if you are indeed minded to grant the planning permission this morning. So, for example, conditions to the, uh, the drawing rooms and so on need to be listed accordingly. <laughs> Chair, you've probably had an opportunity to visit the site this morning. Uh, you've seen within the site, you've seen from the surrounding streets. Uh, you've had a full presentation um, from the applicant this morning. Um, and so you have a full understanding of the issues uh, that you as a planning committee need to take into account of. Um, those are set out more fully in your agenda papers, and I'll just take you through the direct matters. So in terms of the principal development, um, we're satisfied that this uh, mixed-use uh, area um, is suitable for a residential proposal, subject of course to other uh, planning issues, um, and those are the issues that are set out in your agenda. So, in particular, the scale of design, layout, and impact on residential amenities are all very important matters. Um, and you've heard representation there um, from the councillor and other residents about the impact on the conservation area. Your officers are satisfied that, notwithstanding this, is a modern um, development um, with uh, a design that um, isn't a copy of those um, nearby cottages and other surrounding buildings. We are satisfied that the proposals, nonetheless, are um, appropriate in terms of their size, their scale, their layout. Um, there isn't a strong typology um, in this particular part of the Nottingham Conservation Area, um, and we think that the, the overall um, design rationale that is being put forward for you um, is acceptable um, and would not harm the conservation area or indeed the setting of nearby listed buildings. Uh, and that listed building again has been shown in your presentation as the uh, IUE farm. In terms of highway matters, again, share, um, this is being carefully considered by colleagues in highways. They are satisfied both with the uh, access arrangements onto Thomas Lane and the amount of car parking and satisfied uh, that that would have no harmful impact. And similarly, in terms of ecology, uh, again, there have been reports submitted and there's a uh, report uh, before he goes into some detail about that. Just picking up on the comments made by the, uh, the, the final speaker, um, we have had comments back from our ecological consultants and they are satisfied uh, with the reports that have been submitted uh, throughout this application process. You'll see from the agenda papers that this is an old application. It's been, uh, it's been with the authority now for nearly two years. Um, part of the reason for that is because they were required to undertake a back survey. So sometimes the report will make reference to that roost potential, i.e. a building might have the potential that it's then necessary to undertake an actual survey and identify whether there are backs there or not. And I think that's perhaps where there the, the might be some misunderstanding. Uh, but that second survey is what's caused the delay and they've undertaken uh, a survey to identify whether there are any backs. That has been looked at by our external consultants and they are happy with the uh, conclusions of that report. So for all those reasons, Chair, happy to recommend uh, 
approval subject to legal agreement and the conditions with those minor revisions that I've referenced. Thank you. Are there any questions? So, can I move that this recommendation, uh, Councillor Rashford? undermines the style and nature of the conservation area. It is a missed opportunity to develop compatible buildings and is an over-density um, to the site. I don't know if this is the objections. I have to say I don't have a design problem with the... Can I speak to that man if I may, very briefly? Can, can I just say, I think we all know Nottingham actually is a very unique feature of the city, a very historic part of the city. And it's not a low value area, it's not an area where it will be difficult to attract investment. And I, I know I've been told I shouldn't ask it, but I always ask myself, if we rejected this application, do we think something better could come forward? And I personally believe, because it is a high value area of the city, and because it's quite a reasonably sized site, I think it would be very easy. If I can get the Chapel of Richmond Drive, Devon Drive, to have compatible, similar building materials, similar style, to keep the features of the area, I believe a developer would do this. And I worry if we set a standard of modernist buildings going here now, then it will be the care home modernity, which is closed. We'll have another modernist building there, and then Thomas Lane will no longer be Thomas Lane as we know it. I think it is a missed opportunity and we should we should draw the line and say, yes, we develop. The layout was good. I gave a compliment to the developer. I, I have to say I recognise he's developed the site height line compatible. But I believe the style of the buildings we saw in the photographs are totally out of keeping with the front use or the cottages at the back or Tom's Lane at the front. And therefore it's a missed opportunity. And I beg members. Let's have the courage to say something better could be done. Someone else, someone asking your proposed amendment to refuse the application of Council Bradford, that is on the basis that the proposed development will be harmful to the character of the conservation area and will constitute an overdevelopment of the application size. Is that correct? Is that an amendment seconded, please? Thank you, Council Brothers. All those in favour of Council Bradford's amendment, please raise your hand clearly. against the amendment. There being the quality in voting, it is now a matter for the chair to cast this a deciding vote. Chair? I've already voted against. Councillor Radford's motion therefore falls. Councillor Wallace, I believe you indicated you wish to do this one as well. Correct? I, I just want to reiterate that I'm um, against this planning application. I think it, the, the design is way too modern. It's not in keeping with the conservation area and it's not in keeping with the cottages. Just by the way, to be clear on this, do you wish to formally move an objection to refuse the application? And if so, can just be very clear on what grounds you wish to do so?
and can I invite Sam Ryan to speak for the agents?
The application for the contest and special events was accompanied by a variety of detailed technical reports. And your officer's report confirms that they have been reviewed by all the technical officers of the council and have agreed to various matters, such as noise from the events can be satisfactorily mitigated through a noise management plan. The transport effects of the proposed use can be effectively managed through an events transport management strategy, which is similar to that already agreed for match days. There will be no lighting, discernible lighting or air quality effects as a result of the development. Notwithstanding, both the club and the environmental health manager are cognizant of local concerns regarding, regarding the idling of engines during events and have identified measures to address this. The use of the stadium to host a wider range of sports events and screenings would not differ significantly from the current use of the stadium, albeit as previously stated, attendance is likely to be less than for a first team fixture. This map, which has been taken from the club's website, depicts the current match day transport strategy for the stadium, and it was prepared in consultation with the council officers following permission to expand the stadium. The plan has been instrumental in changing travel habits of many supporters attending matches at Anfield. Key features include pre-booked car parking, which is under the control of the club, clear messaging on the website and through ticket sales that there is no local car parking for matches in the match and the football match parking zone, creation of coach lay bys in the area, liaison with bus operators to oh, put on special bus services from the city centre, creation of taxi bays and a clearly signposted walking route to the city centre. <coughs> Next slide please. The application identifies a wide range of documents that provide general in-principle support to the proposals and to broaden the use of Anfield Stadium. A number of those documents refer to the city's aspirations as a major music venue and identify the significant economic benefits that would arise as a result of Liverpool being able to offer a large capacity venue to compete with other cities in the region. Anfield is a unique venue in Liverpool and the only one capable of meeting that requirement. It has a capacity that is more than four times that of the Echo Arena. All of the technical consultees are satisfied that the impacts of the proposed development are acceptable in planning terms and consistent with relevant development plan policies and technical standards sub subject to the imposition of appropriate planning conditions. As with other major events, both in the city and at other venues outside of the pool, it will be necessary to apply to the City Council for an event management licence for each concert and special event at the stadium. This will require a detailed event management plan to be prepared for each event and setting out specific details of matters, including audience numbers, participation profile, impact and travel plans, etc., health and safety, noise management, which includes prior to, during, and after the event itself, and early ongoing collaboration with the local community, also prior to, during, and after the event. The event management plan introduces an additional level of control to the City Council over and above that available through the imposition of planning conditions. It enables ongoing review and management of procedures both in and outside the stadium to minimise local impacts. Finally, the club is also aware of other matters raised by all members in the local community, particularly in terms of antisocial behaviour and littering associated with matches, and the potential for those to spread to other types of events at the field. It is currently liaising closely with the City Council and all members to address those concerns, and has identified various measures such as Increased liaison and cooperation with the police on matters of public decency. Increased awareness in the match programmes on the club's website regarding expectations of fans' behaviour. More steward, seriously increased training of those. Provision of more portable, uh, sorry, portable outside the stadium. Increased number of car parking attendants to both enforce the match day parking and facilitate local access on match days. And increased resources for litter collection in the local area. Such measures can also be included in the bespoke event management plans for concerts and special events. Thank you. I have a question from Councillor Harry Dolan for the year. Hi, thank you. I'll be over. Um, great regards and the objections here. I'm not the objections from the local councillors. And they mentioned uh, towards the end the issue of engagement with the community. Um, so the question would be what engagement have you actually so I'm going to look at the residents in terms of one line says yeah, exclusive person from participating in the development of potential solutions to issues raised. Now I actually brought up around um, the new rules, which is not was not anywhere near um where you put this out before the and I remember match, match days um, and 
to me that the local traffic and parking. Um, and those issues have been going on for a number of years, I believe, um, and particular transport links as well. Uh, what engagement has the LFC had with the community to actually address, address these issues on match days and obviously now going forward if it is approved on these events? Okay, as part of the state of expansion, there was a transport working group set up which does include some members of the local community as well as other transport providers. So that actually resulted in the preparation of the event transport, and sorry, the match day transport strategy that I showed you some information on. So the various measures related to controlling car parking in the area, um, uh, having local buses, putting taxi lane, or taxi bays in the coach bays, all of that was done in consultation with our transport working group. And as I say, that does involve members of the community. In terms of the current application, I've identified as well where uh, there was a detailed newsletter sent out to all members of the community in the local community on the very day the plan which was submitted with access to the club's website with questions and answers and links to the, the council's own website. So actually enabling members of the community to see very quickly what was being proposed. Indeed, on the very day the application was submitted, that, that, that mail line was actually coincided to ensure that the leaflets arrived at the local residents' doorsteps the very day that the application to the council. Councillor Morris has a question.